one of the questions I get asked a lot is of course, which deck of playing cards is my favorite? And the truth is it's a tough question to answer. I'm going to purposefully stay away from saying the parlor deck is my favorite, although for obvious reasons it probably is. There are a lot of decks that I'm really fond of and maybe one day in the future we'll put together a top 10 decks of all time video and make a thing out of it. But in today's episode, I'm going to look at a deck that would surely make the cut and one that may even be very near the top. This is the Pagan Limited Edition Black Deck from Usi. In fact, if you're interested in winning one of these for yourself, be sure to stay tuned all the way to the end of this video, I'm also going to be announcing the winner of the Silver Butterfly Playing Cards. And remember, for the best in playing cards content, like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Design firm Usi, which is the Finnish word for new, has been on the playing card scene for quite some time. Founders Peter Dunham and Linnea Gitz, which are actually a husband and wife team of talented artists, have been creating under the Usi brand since 2010. A Kickstarter campaign in 2012 was the first of many beautiful projects, the Blue Blood playing cards. Campaigns for other decks followed, and I'm proud to say that I own quite a few of their great decks, including some tarot decks that are simply spectacular. The fourth deck produced by the duo is the subject of this video, the Pagan deck. Originally released as part of a Kickstarter campaign in 2014, the Pagan deck was made available in a standard light back edition and a limited edition dark back version, with a subsequent blue limited edition deck being made available later on. Additionally, there exists a Pagan Otherworlds tarot deck that extends the beautiful art style I've yet to show you into the world of divination decks. The reason I'm showing them to you now, aside from the fact that they are just a gorgeous collection of artwork, is that Dunham & Gitz have recently released a new version of the deck, a limited edition black reprint of the Pagan deck. Limited to 1,000 decks, this new Pagan Edition comes packaged in a gorgeous, lightly embossed tuck case printed on premium matte finish cardstock. The box is wonderfully textured and the gold foil gives the tuck case a luxury feel. The artwork is understated with a repeating pattern of small white flowers encased in a lattice of gold line work. This of course is the same pattern we'll see on the back of the cards. In the center, in a field of muted gold, is a black branch with 10 smaller twigs symmetrically positioned on it. The branch is representative of nature, which is one of the deck's principal themes. This new limited edition Pagan deck release isn't without some controversy in the playing card collection circles. Many collectors pointed to the product description of a previous blue deck release that announced that deck as being the final time the Pagan decks would be made available. This caused a few folks, probably owners of the rare and hard to find originals, to balk at the release claiming Uzi had doubled back on their word in order to make a buck off what many thought is their most popular work. Before I give you my opinion, I should mention that to their credit, Usi did make some changes to the new deck, namely a new tuck case design, two new jokers, and a change in the manufacturer of the deck from the United States playing card company to another printer I'll talk about in a few. For thoroughness sake, even the older decks had some differences between editions as well, including the obvious color change and the inclusion of unique diptych cards that were exclusive to each release. Nevertheless, the changes to the new release do have the benefit of at least keeping the earlier versions somewhat unique. I will say that reprinting is a reality of the industry right now. You don't have to look very far to find often controversial decisions to reprint older out of print decks. Look at the recently highly successful Jerry's Nuggets campaign I talked about at length in a previous video. The sides of the box feature no additional detail and the back is just more of the pattern but for a gold bordered rectangle at the top that bleeds over onto the top of the box and acts as a frame for the custom seal. 
Underneath the rectangle is the Usi logo in an old world calligraphy font. The seal announces the deck as being made in the USA, which is odd and in fact incorrect, unless the seal is actually just referencing where the deck was designed or where the seals were made. Regardless, it's a bit misleading because as seen on the bottom of the box, the deck was printed in Taiwan through the expert playing card company. The seal itself is also the only place the deck title Pagan appears. Also on the seal is the year of release 2019 in Roman numerals. The number four appears as well, a reference to this being the fourth deck in a series of six decks produced by Usi. That last bit is also a little bit misleading. Yes, Usi did originally set out to produce a six deck set of playing cards, each one illustrated in a different style using different mediums. But the reality is Usi has gone on to produce a few other decks outside of this set, although admittedly most of those were private commissions from hotels and resorts. Okay, so misleading printer information and reprint controversy aside, there's got to be something that makes what up to this point feels like a collection of inconsistent claims and behaviors into one of my most prized decks of playing cards. And the answer is that despite the confusion in the marketing of the deck, the cards themselves are a gorgeously harmonious set of paintings and themes that are extremely well executed. Pulling the cards out from the box's dark black interior reveals a full bleed casino style back design of the same repeating pattern as found on the box itself. Again, an understated design that nevertheless lends itself well to gameplay. This is a completely custom deck of cards of course. These spot cards feature gorgeous custom pips and include textural variations that accentuate the hand-painted style of the artwork. In fact, not only are all of the cards, courts included, hand illustrated in oil paint by Linnea Gitz, but each card has an off-white texture to the background, a wash of ivory or eggshell paint that gives the deck a weathered vintage feel and gives the sensation of each card being its own slightly variant canvas. The index font is clear and legible and the pip layout is fairly standard as well. The aces feature traditional ornamentation in the form of wreaths of wildflowers and blades of grass. The ace of spades includes a felled tree trunk that the creators have mentioned stands to represent the idea of bowed but not broken. The court cards are my favorite aspect of the deck, however, each illustration is evocative, almost ephemeral, each worthy of hanging in a museum in their own right. On the Kickstarter campaign for the original Pagan deck, Dunham, in his introduction video to the project, tells backers that the deck is really a celebration of nature, a commemoration of the duel's yearly ritual of spending time in the forested areas of Michigan and Wisconsin, near where the husband and wife team make their home. This initial concept led them to explore the world of pagan peoples, which are early pre-Christian societies that not only lived off the land, but revered it and worshipped it. You can of course see the reverence for nature in the artwork of the courts, and each suit is made to represent and draws inspiration from a different region of the world. The spades feature these early folk clothed in garments made from the evergreen elements and creatures of woodland Scandinavia. The hearts represent the mountains of Eastern Europe categorized by shepherds in the pelts of mountain goats. The diamonds feature the fair-skinned inhabitants of the reed and thistle shores of pagan Britannica. And the clubs are populated with the falconers and swordsmen of the Russian plains, shielding themselves from the Russian winters in coats fashioned from black bears. I think the thing I really like most about the courts is how they really kind of evoke a story. I feel like I just want to live in the narrative created by them. There's a promise of lore here that makes me feel as if these characters were created for a series of Dungeons and Dragons novels. They could in fact be like warring factions or families like the ones we watched on Game of Thrones for so long. 
The deck also includes two jokers, original to this version of the deck, mirrored images of a nude woman wearing ram's antlers and enshrouded in togas made from rose bushes. Because this deck is printed by the EPCC and not the USPCC as the previous editions were, the deck only features 54 cards rather than the customary 56. As such, the diptych ad cards seen in previous pagan sets are absent here. However, although the printer change would normally be a bad omen for handling, I can say that this particular EPCC deck is my favorite handling deck of cards by the printer yet, no doubt due to the use of rapidly improving Taiwanese printing facilities. What would normally be a detriment is actually a boon in this case. The deck feels fantastic and worthy of the amazing artwork. The cardstock is firm but snappy and the cards fan and farrow beautifully. The deck is traditionally cut. All previous versions of the Pagan decks have sold out, and although this latest edition was limited to just 1,000, there are still quite a few available at usi.us. That may be due to the fact that the deck wasn't widely promoted. There was no Kickstarter campaign attached to the reprint. Also a factor perhaps is the switch from the USPCC to the EPCC as a printer, although we've shown that to be a non-factor with regards to the deck's actual quality. Maybe the early controversy had something to do with the slower sales, although I kind of doubt that. Perhaps the relatively steep entry cost, however, $30 a deck has kept some folks away. Regardless, it's a good thing for anyone watching this who has come to appreciate the Pagan decks as much as I have and wants a chance to own one for themselves. There is a way, however, to get a Pagan deck without paying $30 and that's entering the giveaway, which I'm about to give you the guidelines for. First, let me congratulate Don Yard on winning the Silver Gilded Butterfly Playing Cards. Contact me via Instagram to claim your prize. For a chance to win the Pagan deck, here's what you have to do. One, like this video. Two, be a subscriber to this channel. And three, comment below and tell me which court card captured your imagination most. Let me know what about the character was most interesting to you. To see another deck that could crack my top 10 all-time decks list, click on the video that will appear right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've been The Gentleman Wake. See you next time. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.